Analog is a company that makes amazing FPGA based video game consoles, and today they sent in their brand new console, the Mega SG, which aims to take Sega Genesis games, Mega Drive games, and even a couple of other games and run them perfectly on high definition screens. How does it work, and is it worth it? Well, let's take a closer look. Analog has a history of taking retro video game systems that people love and improve upon them in almost every aspect for modern televisions. Where the original companies were trying to strike a balance between hardware and price tag, Analog is solely focused on the hardware and the user experience. So you know you're getting a feature-packed, well-designed system that's worth the expense. In the past, we looked at Analog's Super NT system and we were blown away by its performance and capabilities. The Super NT in our mind became the benchmark that all future clone systems had to meet. Everything we threw at it worked. Controllers, games, and even accessories like the Super Game Boy. Its compatibility combined with its suite of options and customization features made the Super NT a joy to use. Analog has continued to maintain the quality of their system through firmware updates that unlock and further improve features of the system. We enjoyed the Super NT so much that when the Mega SG was announced, well, needless to say, we were excited to see if it could live up to what they did for the Super Nintendo. Now let's take a look at the Mega SG console itself. There are a few visual differences between the models that Analog has on offer, and we received the Mega SG USA version that sort of looks like a mixture of a Sega Genesis Model 1 and the Model 2 styles. The console itself is very sleek and simple, but that doesn't mean that it feels cheaply made. It feels well built and also has a good deal of weight to it. On the top of the system is a Genesis cartridge slot, and below that, the power and reset buttons. And the power button, just like the Analog ST, sports a multicolored LED that is customizable. On the back, the system sports micro USB input for power and also HDMI out. And on the front, there are two controller ports that are the same specification as the original Sega Genesis and there's also a headphone jack just like in the original Genesis Model 1. On the side of a console, you'll find an SD card slot that is primarily used for firmware updates, and on the opposite side, hidden under a plastic cover, is an expansion port for the Sega CD. But more on that a little bit later. All you really need to know about the Mega SG is that it is very well made, following in the exact same steps as the Super NT. Analog has once again made quality hardware with this console. But Analog isn't the only company that we're going to be taking a look at today. Because while you can just pick up the system by itself, you can also get it with a wireless controller from the team at 8 Do called the M30. This is a very well-built wireless Sega Genesis style controller, but you do need to be aware of a big difference between some M30 controllers out there. Now, 8 Do sent us another model of the M30 that is just slightly different when compared against the one that Analog is selling directly from their website. The Analog version that you get with the Mega SG is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless controller that connects directly to an included dongle. The moment you plug in the dongle and press start on the controller, you're instantly connected and ready to play. There's no need to configure anything. This controller can also be used on original Sega Genesis models and other devices that use the same older style input. The controller is charged by micro USB and has no way to plug up directly to the dongle or charge directly from the Mega SG itself, but it seems to last an incredibly long time. The other model that 8-bit do sells independently from analog is also called the M30, but it connects through Bluetooth and has a completely different receiver that looks much longer than the one included with the analog version. It charges through USB-C instead of USB Micro and has the ability to connect to multiple devices. It also has four LED lights at the bottom to indicate player order on some modern consoles, and that's something you don't get with the one that Analog is selling. It is reasonably more complex to connect to things, but that's something I've always had issues with with 8-bit do controllers, but you do have more options with it because of that. Now, depending on what control you want, they both offer different features, and the one that Analog sells from their website is just far more easier to connect. And that might be something that some gamers prefer because it really doesn't take a lot of extra work to just plug it in and play. But those are the only differences that you're going to find between these two models, because both of these controllers have the exact same game input buttons. You have a shield style directional pad that feels slightly clicky and very responsive that kind of reminds me of the original Sega Genesis model, and borrowing heavily from the design of the official six button Genesis controller, you have A, B, C, and X, Y, Z buttons on the right. You still get the signature lone start button without any select button in sight, because Sega Genesis games didn't use a select button. However, 
However, 8BitDo has improved upon the design by including an array of three buttons at the bottom. Now, these buttons access different features that you normally wouldn't have had on the original Sega Genesis controller. Like for instance, one of them accesses the main menu features for the Mega SG so that you can modify settings while you're playing games. And another one of those buttons acts as the mode input button that you would have found on the top right of the original six button Sega Genesis controller. But unlike any of the original Sega Genesis controllers you're likely to find out there, this one has L and R shoulder buttons. Now in play, these just duplicate some of the face buttons on the front. And I know for some gamers out there, having shoulder buttons on a Genesis controller may feel wrong, but in practice, well, I think it worked out pretty well. To test out and compare the quality of the Mega SG, we used an original Sega Genesis Model 2 unmodified with original cables and all. The images you're seeing now is exactly what this system outputs to modern HD televisions, which can look a little bit blurry and not quite as sharp. But when you compare an original Model 2 to what the Mega SG is capable of doing, it really is a night and day difference. With the Mega SG, you're getting a clean digital signal through HDMI with crystal clear audio. Originally, the Sega Genesis was capable of outputting through composite or coaxial, or other output methods were possible as well, but nothing even comes close to what the Mega SG is doing right here. Just like the analog Super NT, you're not getting a simple emulation device that just plays dumped ROMs. What you're seeing now is a title being run directly from an authentic cartridge using advanced hardware and an FPGA under the hood. To put it simply, anything that the original hardware can run, the analog Mega SG should be able to run as well. So of course, we had to test that out. We ran a huge range of cartridges from all over just to see what this system was capable of doing and how much it would improve the visual images and in some cases, even the audio. Take Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for example. Here's what the intro looks and sounds like on a real Sega Genesis. The image here is definitely blurrier, and for the longest time, I really didn't think there was anything wrong with the sound. But when you compare the sound directly against the Mega SG, well, you get this. Now let's do that one more time and switch it over mid-sequence instantly so that you can hear the big leap in quality in the audio. I don't know about you, but I have never heard a Sega Genesis sound that good. And I'm even putting it in comparison against some emulators that I've had that have never sounded that clean. All the visuals and audio can be modified as you're playing on the fly without even having to pause the game. All you need to do is access the Mega SG menu and you're off and running. You can add scan lines, adjust the resolution, and you can even add filters over top of the image to get rid of those pixels so that you can give it more of a blended blurry look. Although I personally don't prefer that, and the rest of this video will not be making use of any of that stuff you're gonna see the native 1080p 60 frame per second image that this console provides you without anything over top. And just like the visuals, there's also plenty of audio options that you can modify as well while you're playing. Something to keep in mind regarding audio is that once in a while you'll play a game that might make use of extra audio features. Sometimes it's something on the cartridge or maybe some extra hardware. And when that happens, you need to enable it in the main menu so that you can get that sound. The only drawback from this is that when you turn that on, well, it might sound a little bit hazy and noisy because it's using some additional piece of hardware. But in our testing, in every instance, it always sounded way better than any of the sound you'd be getting from the original Sega Genesis. There's a number of games originally released on the Sega Genesis that make use of interesting visual techniques that sometimes emulators don't get right. And I've seen clone consoles fail at running these games as well. Games like Red Zone that have a really interesting visual intro that kind of looks like a movie sequence playing from the original cartridge. This runs exactly like you'd hope on the Mega SG without any issues whatsoever. Another game we tried out is Zero Tolerance, a first-person shooter released on the Genesis that probably isn't the best playing game in the world, but it's still interesting nonetheless. Playing this game on the original console on a modern high-definition television gives you a blurry look that makes it very hard to see enemies in the distance. And while the Mega SG doesn't make the game better, it does make it easier to see things. 
One notable game that I've seen many emulators fail at is The Adventures of Batman and Robin. This game has an incredible visual style that is unlike anything else you're going to find on the Genesis, and I'm happy to report that on the Mega SG, it looks perfect. And the same thing can be said for basically any regular cartridge game. They all look and sound fantastic, in some ways superior to the original Sega Genesis console. But there are at least two cartridges out there that I like to use while testing out clone systems because they throw a wrench in the works, because they're just a little bit weird. The first one is the Sonic & Knuckles Lock-On Cart. Now by itself, it's a game that just is perfectly functional, but if you put another game on top of it, like Sonic 2 or 3, it becomes a completely different game. Some third-party systems might struggle with this, but the Mega SG doesn't. Everything is running just like it should be, including putting an incompatible cartridge at the top and loading a special stage. This is just like it would have been on the real Sega Genesis. Having this cartridge work is very important to me, because in most official emulation libraries, you rarely ever see this game working together due to licensing issues. So at least this way, you get everything together and it does work. I'm very happy about that. But now, let's try the second cartridge I wanted to take a look at, Virtua Racing. This cartridge makes use of the SVP chip, which is the Sega Virtual Processor. Now, this is kind of like the Super FX chip that you would find in Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. It's capable of pumping out 3D graphics. And well, it works. This isn't the best version of virtual racing out there, but I think it's important to have this running on the Mega SG so people can experience what it was like to play it on the original Sega Genesis, but on a modern high-definition television. We also had one more curveball to throw at the system. We have the fan translation hack of Monster World 4 on cartridge, and it ran flawlessly. This gives me confidence in the future for other homebrew cartridges that are made that can work on the original Sega Genesis will also be able to work on the Mega SG. And that includes the Mega Everdrive from Stone Age Gamer and Crix. Sometimes this cartridge doesn't work on certain clone systems because of its use of a microSD card at the top, but on this system, it works flawlessly. And one more cool Sega Genesis feature that this console has is a copy of Ultra Core. Now, Ultra Core is a game that didn't get released way back in the day for various reasons. But now, for the very first time, we have an official copy of the game running internally in the Mega SG. You just select it from the main menu and there you go, you're playing a lost game. This same idea also happened with the Super NT, but if I had to pick, I'd have to say that Ultra Core is just a little bit of a better game. Now, they're both side-scrolling games, but Ultra Core seems to have more interesting graphics usage and, I just have to say, tighter gameplay. But that's definitely up for debate and personal preference. Regardless though, this is included on every Mega SG that's being sold, so it's just a nice thing to have. While the Sega SG is capable of running lots of original Sega Genesis software, not all the hardware will work with this system. For instance, you won't be able to get 32X to work on here because of the connectivity method that they originally used for that system. That means that any 32X game will not run on the Mega SG directly. You also won't be able to play anything that utilized a Justifier or Menacer, which were light guns that were created for the original Sega Genesis. We spoke with Analog about the chances that they would be supporting these devices in the future, with a further update, and they informed us that although the hardware itself will not be able to run it directly, they will be releasing something called a DAC, a digital to analog converter, and it will be able to run 32x games directly on your high definition screen. However, you will not be able to run Justifier or Menacer games with a screen like that simply because the technology is incompatible, but with this DAC, you'll be able to run games directly on a CRT using the Mega SG, so that at least gives you some solution to play those games on older screens. And this DAC will also work with the Super NT so that you can use any of those games that require that kind of technology as well. But that device simply isn't available right now, so for anyone looking to get a Mega SG, just keep that in mind. Something that is available right now and included in the box with the Mega SG is a Sega Master System adapter. This means you will have the ability to play any Sega Master System game available on the same system that you play Sega Genesis games on. Just like with everything we showed you on the Sega Genesis, you're going to see upgrades in visual and audio quality across the board. This includes support for often forgotten items like the Sega Sports Pad. You can pretty much count on anything on the Master System working on here, but once again, just like with Sega Genesis games, anything that required a light gun simply won't work. 
While the Sega Master System adapter is included in the box, in the future you'll also be able to buy other adapters as well, like one for Sega Mark III games, another one for Game Gear, and another adapter that will support Sega MyCard, SG-1000, and SC-3000 games. And all of this has been fantastic. Everything has worked the way we expected it to, and in some cases even surpassed our expectations. But what is the single best feature that the Mega SG has? Well, that's support for Sega CD. This is the very first time that I have ever seen Sega CD games run in high definition straight from the original hardware. Now, something to keep in mind is that the Mega SG does not include a CD drive built into the system. You'll need to use an original Sega CD or Mega CD drive. Now, there are two models that exist of these systems, and either one will work fine, but we're using Model 2. Once attached, the games run exactly like they did utilizing the original Sega Genesis hardware. Now, because you're still using the original CD drive, you're not going to see an increase in speed of loading times or anything like that. All you're getting here is a higher quality visual signal and a much higher quality audio signal as well. Many modern gamers make fun of the Sega CD, but the truth is that there are a lot of really good games on the platform, and although it didn't have a very long lifespan, many of the games on here never saw release on any other platform, or if they did, they were heavily modified to exist on another platform. And some games like Snatcher only ever saw one English release on this platform. And while you can't use the Justifier gun sequences, you can still play the game in full from beginning to end with the best audio and visual you've ever seen running from this original hardware. From everything I've experienced, I have to say that this is the single best way to play Sega CD games on the market right now. Aside from software emulation for Sega CD games, nothing even comes close to what the Mega SG is doing right here. Analog has once again released a groundbreaking system. Just like the Super NT is the best way to play original Super Nintendo cartridges on your modern high-definition TV, the Mega SG is the same thing for not only Sega Genesis games, but also for Master System games and Sega CD games as well. And with the other adapters they'll soon be releasing, they'll be able to expand the capabilities of this system even further than where it is now. If you're a hardcore Sega fan, I simply can't recommend the Mega SG enough. It plays older Sega games like no other console I've seen before. And if you've not actually played Sega Genesis games or Master System games or even Sega CD games, this might be the best way to play them for the very first time. Because that library of classic Sega games has some of the best titles ever from the classic era of 90s gaming.